Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Fabian for Liberty with an exclusive update. If you've watched my channel for some time, you know I don't break exclusives. I'm not a journalist. I simply give my opinion. You can do whatever you want with it, right? I give my opinion on financial markets, geopolitics, uh, and most importantly, self-reliance and entrepreneurship. But um, this is an incredible story. Um, uh, and, and here goes, quite frankly. But first, let me, let me just talk, give a little background about the Ukraine situation. I, I can't believe, and I just want to kind of disclosure for the world that's watching this around, you know, people around the world. I believe, and so do I think a majority of Americans, I don't represent a majority of Americans, but I don't speak for them, but I will speak up for, I think, the principles of America. And the idea that America was supposed to be a beacon of liberty and just a model for the rest of the world. Instead, what we are seeing is via the global economic reset, we see uh, all kinds of government-funded organizations, George Soros, the State Department, involved in, in, in fomenting a Ukrainian civil war, okay? And the media is going along with this, trying to paint Vladimir Putin as the cause for what they say he's crushing skulls, or the president of Ukraine is now crushing skulls because the $15 billion line of credit that Russia has now given uh, Ukraine he says, or the media is actually claiming this, that is contingent upon the Ukrainian president crushing the so-called, uh, you know, peaceful demonstration. Now, look, I've watched the live footage. You may have seen the live footage. You have police, Ukrainian police, okay? They probably are just like, look, they have families. They can really give a crap. But, you know, they, they're doing their job. Showing incredible restraint, in my opinion. I mean, you have armored vehicles that are driving into, getting firebombed, the, the, the people in that armored vehicle likely being cooked to death. And the media keeps talking about how these are peaceful protesters. It's amazing. Peaceful protesters, ladies and gentlemen, who, by the way, have stormed uh, munition factories or munition plants, taken up arms or shooting, pro or shooting police, and the police are just standing there taking it. It's really incredible. It's incredible to see how the collusion of media big government, all of these billionaire like Soros that have all of these, you know, motives and interests behind why they want to create civil war in these countries. It's amazing to see this. And the American people, quite frankly, they don't know what's going on. I mean, they don't even know where Ukraine is on the map. In fact, that's why I drew a map of Ukraine behind me. You know, <coughs> I know it's a little bit rustic, but point, you, you'll get the point here in a second. Anyways, look, yesterday I... Um, a very, very close personal friend of mine, he's actually a family member of mine, who is an extremely successful business person. I don't really want to get into too many of the details, but anyways, he invited me to lunch with one of his clients, who I believe is a billionaire, but he's Russian. Um, he actually used to be in the Russian government like 20 years ago. In fact, you know, look, real quick brief scenario on the Russian collapse. Uh, a lot of people, top Russian analysts, don't take my word for any of this, uh, have come out and said, look, there's really no Russian collapse. All it was was a transition from communism to state-run uh, capitalism, which is kind of what the Chinese have been doing, and basically switching the you know military suits to a more kind of watered-down version of business suits, kind of what Fidel Castro has done, or his brother Raul, instead of rolling around in the military fatigues, he's now in a business tie with a suit, right? So we started talking about Kiev, and he's telling me, and again, this is a very well-connected guy, he has a home in Moscow, has an incredible home in Florida, and an incredible home um, in Norway as well. Point is this, we went to lunch, we actually were talking about business, I went to just talk to him about business because he's an incredible business guy. Point is, is that we started talking about Kiev, and he just on the fly tells me, oh yeah, Putin is getting ready to absolutely squash the rebellion because he cannot allow the West to continue to pile troops, to pile missiles along the Russian border. And make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what's happening and what's been happening where all along the Russian border, up, uh, up where it comes up to Eastern Europe, Poland, all that, they're literally putting missiles. It's kind of like the Cuban Missile Crisis where you had miss nuclear missiles on the island of Cuba pointed towards America. America's like, we're not going to do that. Imagine if Canada... And Mexico had all kinds of missiles, Tomahawk missiles, nuclear missiles on our, on our northern and southern border. Do you think America would put up with that? Now look, I've said it all along. Putin is ruthless. He's a former KGB guy. He's a cold-blooded cold killer. I'm not defending Russia. 
I'm trying to just want, I just want literally want peace and I want my country not to be involved in all these foreign entanglements like our founding fathers warned us about. Point is, back to this Russian billionaire guy, and again, I think he's a billionaire. If I gave out his name, you could, you could see him. I know there's a Forbes article about him and a bunch of other car, uh, stuff about him. Anyways, he's claiming he knows on good word, because I asked him, I'm like, wait a minute, how do you know that? Because I read online that there's like 1,400 troops that are going into, you know, Russian troops. He said, no, no, no. He knows he used to be in the military. In fact, he worked in this major Russian military base that's right now in Belarus, a major military base here. Okay, here's Ke Kiev. This is uh, Ukraine. Sevastopol has a major, major military Russian Navy base. The Black Sea loaded with Russian Navy. Okay, so you see you have a major Russian military presence here, major Russian military presence just on the outskirts of the Ukrainian border. This guy is telling me that you have hundreds of highly trained combat, uh, you know, paramilitary type Russian commandos, if you will. They're like the equivalent of like Navy SEALs or Green Berets that are in Kiev right now, dressed as regular people, infiltrating the uh, so-called, you know, freedom fighter, whatever you want to call it. And he claims 30 to 60 days at the most. Actually, he thought just probably about 30 days or likely when the Olympics are over. They are going to absolutely crush the rebellion and put it down and Putin's going to come out along with China and be very, very vocal in backing the Ukraine and backing the current presidency. This is a blockbuster, ladies and gentlemen, because look, there's all kinds of unsubstantiated rumors that 1,400 military troops are now, you know, Russian troops are now in Ukraine. And I understand. I don't have any facts to show this to you. I'm not even telling you to take my word for it. I'm just telling you, I'm just passing it along, Okay. High-level government, former government guy, high-level Russian guy, knows a lot of people in Russia, again, spends half the year in Moscow, has businesses over there, is claiming this is what's going on. And I'll tell you what, um, when you see Putin releasing $15 billion to Ukraine, it's clear. Putin's taking the stand and he is backing the president in Syria, he stopped the invasion there, stopped Obama from striking, stopped the West from trying to do another Libya. He's doing the same thing in Ukraine. Putin's putting his foot down. He's defending these allies, okay? Putin overnight can shut down natural gas to Europe and Europe would absolutely freeze to death, okay? And that's the leverage they have over Europe. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, this is the global economic reset via proxy wars happening right now. But again, just to be crystal clear, I have it on really good, what I believe to be really good. First time I've ever met him, probably last time I'll meet him. But based on everything I know about him and my, my, my uh, family member who knows him really well, because he handles all his estate planning in America, all his insurance stuff, all that, that less than 30 days, you're going to see the rebellion. You're going to see this basically put to an end. And the Eastern super bloc that's emerging recognizes that it's no longer, you know, the U.S. invading with troops. Now they invade with subversion, with, you know, funding the opposition. I mean, look, when you see these so-called freedom fighters, ladies and gentlemen, these are highly trained. Many of them are CIA rogue operatives, uh, former Green Berets, what have you, that are training the opposition, just like on record, you can Google this, they train the so-called Egyptian, you know, Muslim Brotherhood radicals, basically train the State Department, train them in New York, train them to use social media, everything else, to foment the revolution in the Arab Spring, just like they did in Tunisia. It's the exact same thing that's happening in Kiev. It is a global destabilization campaign that's happening all around the global economic reset. And on what I've heard is Russian troops are storming into Kiev. They're there right now. They are going to put this thing down in 30 days or less. We'll find out if that's true or not. I'm Fabian for Liberty. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please subscribe. Please share it. Remember, Saturday, February 22nd, actually this Saturday, just a few days, I'll be doing my Global Economic Reset Conference. Tickets are still available if you're in Los Angeles. Love to have you come out. See the link below. I'm Fabian for Liberty. FabianCalvo.me. Thanks for watching. I'm out.